You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. From the AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Rookie Blue After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show, it's AfterBuzz TV's Rookie Blue After Show. Oh, oh I like that it starts with that bell. It's very fitting yeah. for tonight. I feel like we should yeah. be ready for the fight night, guys. Get ready. Let's get pumped. For the rumble. Boom. Mm-hmm. Boom clap. Jimmy's in the back with a pocket of hot. Catchy. You guys <laughs> are getting, way, Sorry, too I'm getting way too into this. Welcome, everyone, to the Rookie Blue After Show here on AfterBuzz TV. I am Tiana Hobson, and joining me tonight, I have the awesome and dynamic, Aww. I'm using new words, Marissa Serafini. Hello, everyone. Um, it is season five, yes, episode three, Heartbreakers, Money Makers. Also directed by Gregory Smith. Oh, tonight, was, see, Marissa with her fun facts. There you go. He directed that's, tonight. That's why I keep you around. Yeah. Because if it was just me, it kind of be boring. <laughs> <laughs> no, it would be awesome. No, no, no. All right. <laughs> so tonight's episode, we got a fight. I think the fight night. I am mad at the editors right now because the way that they cut together the trailer last week for this episode made it seem like Nick was going to be fighting right. Sam or like that, you know, everything was mm. just going to come to this big boiling point. They did that on purpose to trick us, and I don't like trickery. It's, I mean, it's an evil trick that editors use so often to get the audience to come back for the next week. But I mean, they did fool us. Yeah. And good on them. Fool me once for shame on. You, you. <laughs> fool me twice. Shame on me. Yeah. I can say the same. I can, That's I can it. do it. I can do it, I swear. Um, all right, so But we'll get to that. Yeah, we'll get to the fights at the end of the of our episode because that's just we're gonna talk about a lot of that. <laughs> um let's start with operation accountability. Yep. Um so in what's the inspector's name? Inspector Yeah, uh, Jarvis. Jarvis. I Jarvis. always forget his name. Inspector Jarvis shows up for morning meetings and informs everyone about their assignment for the day. Well, I, he's there with Shaw. I mean, I don't like Jarvis conducting the meetings. I miss best. Yeah. And like if or Shaw's going to be the Oliver acting, do it. Yeah. If he's going to be the acting staff sergeant, then let him do it. Do it. Like, yeah. All of a sudden, best is gone. And now he, the, Jarvis is around. And I just mm -hmm. don't understand because he's never been around before so i don't know how to and now he's around all the time yeah but i think it's just to set the tone that this is a really important operation don't mess it up yeah to all you rookies out there so basically they're going around and they have warrants for all these goods that you know have been stolen or purchased with stolen money and mm -hmm. they have to go around and confiscate it from these people and it's kind of a to go with this fight night it's like competition between the different divisions um and so you know shaw wants everyone to come back with the most and collect all this stuff yeah we're the best division out there yeah i like i like the competition because you know we always hear about the other divisions or like so and so is from this division or you know but the actual encounter with another division tonight's episode was a fun story yeah. to play off of yeah and going along those lines gail and dove have you know a very close encounter with another division very um they end up on showing up at the same house as wes chloe's husband ex-husband ex soon to be ex-husband ex -husband. i'm pretty sure soon to be yeah um and you know it tension's very high between Dove and West clearly because they get out the car and you know immediately mm -hmm. the tension is there. My question was because I didn't quite catch who was Wes's partner. Yeah, the girl's name. I I didn't catch her name either. She why really did was she irrelevant. hate Gail so much? I mean, I know everyone hates Gail because she's kind of you know you got to warm up to her. 
But <laughs> did they that have a true. past that I'm uh, unaware of? It seemed like it because I questioned, all right, have we seen this person before? And if you did, please tell us and we're missing this. But I couldn't recognize this woman. Yeah, I was very confused. And it's like, I get it. It's all a competition, but I get why the guys are Maybe hating Maybe word other. travels fast between divisions. Oh, it's Gail. She's not the most likable person. Maybe it was just one of those things. It definitely could be. Well, the house that they get, um, Shaw tells, you know, Dove and Gail, stand back, you know, um, Wes got there first, so let them take the lead. <laughs> Wes, you know, takes the full advantage of this and is like, this is our house, our bust. You guys go downstairs and you get to haul away the washer and dryer. Good luck getting them up the stairs. Yeah. Oh. Well, funny. little, of course, you know, when you're trying to be a jerk to someone, of course the universe is going to. It's karma, man. It's karma. So they're down there moving the washer and dryer and find a safe. Mm-hmm. They call call up their boys, have it blown up. Blow up. That was fun. That was fun. I enjoyed that. And inside is a bunch of cash and debit cards. Mm-hmm. So which one would you go for if you just opened up the safe and I, saw it? I would have gone with the cards because the cards are electronical. You, you can keep the electronical records somewhere out there in the universe. I mean, you say once it's on the internet, it literally is on the internet forever. You can trace those numbers back to the banks, back to any electronical purchases or anything. So I think that was smart. Cash is hard. is easy to get rid of, but harder to track as well. Yeah. There's, there's literally no paper trail. Exactly. Um, I thought that Wes was a little quick to the jump there. And I don't know, for me, I would have been... I might have thought twice about it if I was Wes as soon as Dove gave up so easily. You know, because they were arguing over who was going to get the money. The money or the cards. Or the cards. And Dove just goes, you know what? No questions asked. You guys just take take the cash. We'll take the cards. And easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You you can go farther. You can go farther into your investigation with cards. Yeah. And, I mean, Dove does think that there's more that can be done in Dove does have really good instincts. We have to mm-hmm. give that to him as, you know, easy as it's been for him to be a punching bag in the past. He is a good cop. He's an analytical kind of guy. Yeah. And so he wants to go for, you know, the bigger story, the bigger bust here, which is tracing, you know, these cards back to the group of, you know, the fraud people who they are looking who are just for. Getting money out of the ATM machines, which was really smart. And yeah. within like at least a thousand dollars within no f- ten thousand dollars right, uh, yeah. the 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 certain amount um within five minutes I was I'm like I never thought of that yeah oh yeah it was a thousand dollars so you, you do five hundred five minutes before midnight and, and then like five after, after. Midnight. I mean I think we know what Marissa might go do after the I mean, show tonight maybe <laughs> well, I'm, whole, I, I'm getting let me make sure I have my real debit card when I leave here. <laughs> Marissa. I won't take your money. Oh, okay, thanks. I respect you enough. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, they go and talk to Tracy, who you know helps them out a little bit with the case. Um, but even before that, sorry, I, oh. I loved Gail's reaction. She's like, "We're, we're going to fight night. Come on!" And, I'm like, <laughs> and the fact that Dub wants to go the extra mile, he's the real good cop, and then Gail was like just a citizen and all that and the civilian more like him be like i just want to go to fight night <laughs> yeah like i don't want to go further like, into um, this no i want to do what we were told to do like and move on <laughs> yeah don't want to go the extra mile right now um so then they go and they're back at the precinct talking to tracy shaw's like what are you guys doing here i told you to you know, stay with Wes and his team. And they're like, oh, yeah, cramps. Um, Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was funny. I just love seeing I mean, that's a legitimate excuse anytime you use it. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, I just love Dove and Gail's relationship because they've been through so much from, like, hating each other to mm-hmm. Dove actually caring. You know, when they're in the car and stuff, he's actually asking her about her relationship with Holly, how everything's going, mm-hmm. um, you know, like, oh, well, I'd be kind of scared that you weren't really fully committed because, you know, you've only been with guys in the past. Yeah, I mean, and I like Gail's relationship with Holly and how she's seeing in her perspective on the relationship, too, because you see her in the car when she's 
laughing, literally laughing mm-hmm. on the phone. It seems like she is actually happy now. I'm like, all right, good for Gil. Yeah, she sounds, you know, her happy like, place. Holly is a good person to have in her life. It's making her a more nicer person. Yeah, she's more pleasant to be around. Yeah, definitely, that's, definitely. That's at least sure. for now. <laughs> at least for now. Um, and Tracy's able to track the safe that was in the house to an abandoned warehouse, so they won't need a warrant or wait for that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they're just walking around talking about Gail and Holly and <laughs> just being casual. And then all of a sudden they turn a corner and boom, there's the <laughs> bunch whole of operation people. right there of the fake the fake cards fake fake cards i was like that was really easy for them to solve that case very very easy i mean you go to abandon my house good chances everything's happening there so it makes sense i love their reaction though it was like oh because it was too easy and Mm -hmm. they didn't even expect either and then it took like that two seconds to realize what was going on and then it's like hands up (laughs) don't move yeah it's like everyone was shocked at first and then it's like (laughs) oh wait we're the cops okay (laughs) you're all under arrest (laughs) Yeah, I thought that was great. Um, I loved how Oliver and Jarvis show up. And, you know, Jarvis, I mean, they just did something really great. And I get that they went above and beyond when, like, you didn't tell them to. I know. But and should they have really gotten in trouble for that? No, absolutely not. I think these are the, hey, you just, they just made Division 15 look awesome. They're rock stars right now. And you're like, Come on, we being again taking that civilian around and be like, we just want to go to fight night. You guys made it more complicated than it should. <laughs> like, hey, these are the guys you trained and you're in your division. They made you look awesome. They just had this big bust and yeah. you're not really congratulating them. Yeah, I thought that was kind of weird too, because especially after, you know, la- last week when Jarvis was kind of telling Bess, like, hey, the div- or not Jarvis, but the other guy was telling him, hey, 15 kind of looks like idiots right now for letting a guy dressed as a cop walk Uh, around and like shoot up the place yeah you know so it's like okay they're doing something good now they just had this huge bust and you guys are kind of busting them for it yeah it's like i don't you'll get desk work for the next time you desk duty yeah i was like oh okay that's how you want to play but maybe i don't know maybe this is more predictions jarvis he just i don't like him neither do i and i I feel like maybe he's I feel like he's out to make 15 look bad. Maybe, maybe, like, maybe this is a prediction. Maybe he's actually trying to get 15 shut down. So he's trying to really, like, tank them. And so he's mad when they do good things. Or or maybe he's trying to twist the police and see maybe there are some corrupt cops or dirty cops in in division. I mean, sure, Marissa, if you want to go, like, the more logical way. (laughs) Maybe, maybe. Like, because he's smart. He's manipulative. And he can turn any story on anyone to make it look like, hey, they did so-and-so and so. -so, They're dirty. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we need to get rid of them. They're making division look bad. Division has to shut down. Mm, See? Just expanding on your... Just expanding. All right. As long as you're back to what I said. (laughs) Piggybacking off yours. (laughs) Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see what Jarvis is really up to and if we actually get to see what he's really up to. Um, and then Dove and Wes get into it again at fight night in the bathroom. Wes, that was Wes's doing. And yeah. I'm glad Dove took the high road and I got, didn't get into that. Be like, hey, Chloe's mine. Back off. Yeah, I thought there was about to be it's a sec. over. Yeah, I was like, fight night part two in the bathroom. <laughs> yes. But no, it didn't happen. <laughs> you know, you were happen. thinking it might happen to Marissa. It, maybe, yeah. I mean, I was like, Wes looked like he wanted to punch part. Dove. Oh yeah, absolutely. He's he's crazy on a certain level. Like you don't know. Like literally, something's going on with them. Not all wires are are going <laughs> functioning right. You know, it's like he's kind of twisted in that way. I don't know what he's capable of yet. Yeah, and that's what's scary definitely um let's get into the main case of the night or the bigger case i should say yeah um we have which i thought was kind of weird andy duncan and nick Mm -hmm. all riding together surprising surprise have we seen three officers riding around together not usually but if you think about it duncan is a rookie and 
this is a big operation, so good chances you're probably going to need two actual officers, and then, you know, Duncan was along for the ride. Yeah, I guess that's true. I'll give you that. Um, so they go to Gino Jones' house to confiscate his boat and... What else were they? Other, Other possessions, possessions. Rings. Yeah, he was running a illegal poker ring, and um, he has a lot of money hidden away and stuff like that. So they get there, and he's fighting with his wife, Myrna. Um, and, you know, they come in, and they're lucky- letting Duncan, who was actually a much better rookie this episode than he was in yep. the last, um, they're letting him kind of, you know, take the lead on this. And poor Duncan... <laughs> get sucker punched (laughs) i mean you say better rookie i'm like you're getting too close to gino (laughs) yeah but but he just didn't seem quite as he wasn't you know yeah he wasn't obnoxiously acting like a rookie he was trying to do a good thing got too close (laughs) to gino sucker punch boom i'm like oh assaulting i honestly didn't see that coming that happens so (laughs) fast yeah it's like i mean this dude's in his robe what's really gonna happen right you know oh he's gonna punch (laughs) a cop and then and run away and run away and hello you have a freaking uh ankle bracelet on like they're gonna track you exactly you're not gonna you're not gonna get far even if you were to find a way to get it cut off, they still would probably get to you first. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what he tries to do. He um, tries to get his um, monitor cut off, and he's at his friend's oh. garage doing it, and that's where they track him to. I-, I love the ways he's trying to get the ankle <laughs> off. Like, even before the car, when they're in the house, and he, he, he takes that one weapon, he's like, here, just stab me now. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, whoa. Dude, calm yeah, down. Calm down. Don't, and don't then pick he up takes, a knife with cops. And then he takes an actual saw, and they're like, okay, here's another weapon that he has. How, how is he getting a hold of all these weapons? Yeah. Um, that was pretty funny. Yeah, that was really funny. So when they finally get this guy, because he's at his friend Lee Baker's garage, um, and Lee lied to the cops, but, you know, they were kind of nice. Obstruction. Obstruction, Obstruction of, of justice. justice. $5,000. That's a lot of money. Or five years five months months in prison i th- I believe it was five months yeah we'll go with five months because five years seems a little yeah much for... I, I remember a thousand dollars a month <laughs> oh okay that's a good way to think of it Marissa. yeah five thousand or five months yeah so when they get to the precinct um duncan is struggling with you know doing the uh fingerprinting and headshots like checking in um gino, <laughs> gino. and sam says you know hey i need one of you guys to help with this interrogation and nick lets andy go lets andy Let go her. i kind of was hoping that nick was gonna be the one to go i mean i i kind of wanted that too but i think it was just a way that and you know it shows that disconnect between nick and andy now that nick wanted to get away before things got too awkward and yeah. complicated and i love that he twisted it as like for annie like hey take a break for the from the rookie you go yeah handle that thing he's still being the nice guy it's like i'll let you have this one <sighs> nick it's so nice he's sweet. so good he's so good to darn her. it andy come on i know andy why can't you see the good thing that's in front of you it's right there <sighs> it's right there um well they get into the interrogation and Gino immediately lawyers up, which is something that I always say, always lawyer up, because mm-hmm. even if you're innocent, sometimes but it was, it was, things happen. It was too quick, too, because even when they were arresting him, they were like, yeah, tell me something I don't know. And yeah. he, he wasn't really fighting it. I mean, yeah, he did run away, but he wasn't really as resistant to arrest. And then, then immediately lawyering up and then immediately going over the call to yeah. admit everything i'm like this is too easy it's going way too fast way too easy and andy has those kind of instincts too this is where andy and dove kind of are the same because they both are always looking for not they more have common work sense, to do though. but they're just kind of like hey this doesn't make any sense let's actually dig a little deeper and that's what andy does she looks up um she traces the lawyer's number and it goes straight to lee baker's garage so then they call, you know, have and um, have Sam mimic <laughs> Gino's <laughs> voice. Gino's you sound voice just like him. Yeah. All of a sudden, Sam's 
a ventriloquist. <laughs> um, and they call, and Gino's wife is on the phone. Myrna. Myrna saying that Lee showed up at the house to get the bail money, and he thinks that there's more money, and now her he's husband's threatening lying. Threatening my life. Threatening her life. Don't tell the cops, or else, you know, he's going to hurt me. So Andy and Sam are like, okay, we got to do something about gotta this. Got to go back over there. They go to Gino, and Gino's like, I don't have any more money. I don't know what he's look, looking for. He just works security for me. He doesn't know how much it costs to run these things. Yeah. Well, lo and behold, get back to their house, <laughs> and who's the one tied up? It's Lee. It's Lee. And, <laughs> like, this is a nice twist. And at first, I was, I was so confused. I was like, Oh my gosh, did he tie himself up to make himself look like, you know, a, a, good hostage. Person, a hostage? And he's totally lying to them. Like, she's going crazy. And then you see her in there actually going crazy. And I was like, it took me mm. until I saw her going through the stuff to believe that she wasn't in danger still. Yeah, she, she was the one. I was like, oh, she's smart. I mean, I should have picked it up from the first time we saw her because she was angry yeah. at Gino for buying all of this stuff. And, and then maybe her knowing that. He has money. There is, has to be more of it. And he, she was in the house before the police even came here. And, and Gino said that he had more money before you guys came. Yeah. So, I mean, she knew everything that was going on. It was, it was smart of her. So she was crazy enough to know that there's more money That there's out there. more money. But she wasn't crazy enough to think, hey, my husband bought this giant piano that he never, never. plays. Let me tear apart for the entire house. But never touch the piano. <laughs> don't look under it. <laughs> yeah, don't look under the piano. But even Andy and Sam weren't really looking for no. it. Andy was just kind of playing some keys and it was like, oh. That was a good chance. Yeah. But honestly, how hard does she look in that house? I mean, <laughs> it's a big house, so I give her that. I would look in a piano, too. I would have looked... I would have looked in the big places Underneath before. the piano, I... in the piano. Yeah, the couch cushions. I would have gone for the big stuff. Mm -hmm. Big um, open crevices. Yeah, you know? exactly. So they find the money. Um, they arrest Myrna. And Myrna and Gino then get to have a good old-fashioned marriage counseling session <laughs> in the no, interrogation they need room. This. They need this. They needed that. They need to hash things out. So hopefully they're okay and sam and andy decide to go over to fight night together mm -hmm. yeah interesting interesting right <laughs> this fight night though this fight night though it's pretty fun it was pretty fun i mean you were kind of grimacing throughout it <laughs> i was because i grimace when i see violence it's just i know i look like this big tall like tough person but i'm just a soft cuddly teddy bear inside <laughs> and <laughs> It's so funny because I, not that I, I embrace it, but I, like I don't mind it. Maybe I'm just so desensitized to this violence, which is sad and terrible when I say that. But maybe I've just seen too many Rocky movies to yeah. not be faced. I mean, I love those kind of movies and you know, I love violent Rocky. films and stuff. But I always watch them with like my hands kind of <laughs> over my face, just because all I can think of is my face getting hurt and Nick's poor face was getting murdered Ooh, got bashed and you we all know that i love nick and i think his face is too adorable to be hit multiple <laughs> times like that so i was having some problems with watching the fight night yeah and that that rookie bruno from division yeah. 34 he i was like he was definitely he was, gonna mess nick yeah up. so i love that duncan our rookie was supposed to fight the other rookie but he sees the guy and is kind of like um you know i think i tore something <laughs> in my shoulder and i can't rotator cuff yeah i yeah. can't fight and he totally bails at the last minute such a rookie <laughs> such a rookie i mean not even able to step up to the plate i mean tracy fought in fight night season one she was a rookie and she won that match yeah exactly and it, she's a girl <laughs> she's a girl and not she even showed I mean, she even showed her pictures you know this was me after fight night and I won. And I won. <laughs> so I think. And you couldn't even do that. Yeah, I think he was a little scared. Um, and I guess that's, you know, not without. I mean, he wasn't really in practice with Nick. He wasn't really that great. So he's probably going to get his butt kicked anyway. But well, I actually thought he was, you know, because that was like the very first scene that we saw of the episode. I'm like, OK, he's kind of in shape. I'm surprised. 
Yeah, he's got and some big like, guns he, on him. He could have had a good fight had he not chickened out. Yeah, but he's a little, he's a little bit of a wuss. Um, yeah, I said it. I called him a wuss. <laughs> um, but he bails on it, and Nick steps in. Mm, which I mean, fun. seems heroic and so nice until the fight starts, and I don't know. There's something going on with Nick. I mean, I we know what's going on. You know, he's still get, trying to get over Andy and that whole breakup thing. Yeah. But I feel like he's just kind of completely letting himself go, and he's gonna spiral into a dark place or something. With you know, he sees Andy walk in with. Sam, which, I mean, would hurt, but also they did just finish a case together, and Mm -hmm. if it's probably going to be there at the same time. They probably just rode together, you know, from the precinct. Like, if Andy and Tracy had been working on a case and been the last two people at the office, they would have showed up together. You know, it didn't just happen to be them, and he just kind of, like, looked defeated from the start. Like, he wasn't even really trying that hard to win. Yeah. And then to to see Andy, and then he kind of got you. You could see that he was trying. He really was fighting, literally. And then he gets sucker punched at the end, knocked knocked down. And I'm like, oh, that's such a sad metaphor for what's going on right now. That yeah. he's fighting, and when you get into a fight, you're likely to get hurt. Mm-hmm. And he did get hurt, and he did get defeated. And I'm like, I hope that's not the case with Nick and Andy. He's fighting, but I hope he doesn't lose. Yeah. I hope that he keeps fighting. Yeah. Because the conversation. Get knocked down and get back up again. Yeah, because the conversation they had kind of ended with, like, you know, you get defeated, but it didn't say anything about, you know, like, rising back up and continuing to fight. Yeah, and he said, you know, at least he tried. At least he tried. I still believe that Andy doesn't know what she wants. I still think there's hope for Nick and andy well yeah and that's the thing andy's torn between two guys obviously but nick knows what he wants and he wants andy and i want them together i, want them together. I mean i do like mcswark but i like nick and andy I too like, nick and andy. like i just i'm torn I'm that's torn. just what i want in my life i wish there was i wish andy was a twin so that she could have both of them <laughs> so you can being... win in both <laughs> yeah ways. win in both ways um and I just want to say that I thought that Chris uh, Diaz, you know, that coordinating was, the whole fight night. That was kind of funny. It was really funny because he was freaking out about making things perfect. You have Chloe showing up out of the blue like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, okay. Tell me this. I felt like there was a moment between Chris and Chloe when Chloe first shows up and Chris just like gives her a good, nice, solid two, three second look. I'm like, what is going on? I felt there's some chemistry, some sparks flying right now. I felt it more when she was coaching Nick, between her and Nick there. Ah, okay. But with the Diaz thing, I took it as, oh, hey, like my roommate's girlfriend who I always see with my roommate, and now I'm seeing her by herself. By herself, and we're alone together, and. Like, her boyfriend's not here to make things okay. Okay, maybe I was just reading too much into it, because that was a long pause. I'm like, what's going on? Yeah, because at first I was kind of like, wait a minute. And then I was like, well, no, like, Dove and Diaz, you know, they're kind of like brothers, or as Gail referred to them, like, you know, Diaz is Dove's son. So, yeah, you know, it's kind of like that kind of relationship. So then I started thinking about it. I was like, well, I guess if you're used to hanging out with your so- roommate and his girlfriend and then yeah all of a sudden it's separate okay. it's a little awkward but i and you know going back to chloe and nick during that whole pep talk that was so <laughs> funny i don't know anything about boxing or pep talks <laughs> that was pretty I, I love the humor throughout this, yeah. this episode she's, she's there for moral her, support moral support and you gotta know. love chloe i'm glad she's back to like her normal self yeah because last week we saw her concerned about overdub, and now she can actually be on her own, and just, she's making her friends with the division, and, you know, she's just awesome by herself. Yeah, and we know her better now, so we don't think that she's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, kind of, like, out there in outer space by herself. Uh, but I thought it was interesting, too, that Diaz, Chloe gets him to admit, um, you know, he misses being a rookie. Mm-hmm. And... It got me thinking about, you know, like, holding on to the glory days and, like, the past. 
And not even that their rookie year was the glory days. I don't even think. Like, so much has happened yeah. to them that I think it would be better to, like, all right, clean slate moving forward. Yeah. And so much has happened in Diaz's life, too, because he went through the whole, you know, rookie phase, but then thinking he was a father and then he wasn't and then his crazy string of girlfriends and so a lot has happened to Diaz in the last four years and then I can understand being in the leadership role taking on more responsibility mm-hmm. having people look towards you now to coordinate something as traditional as a fight night that's a big responsibility and then him freaking out because he doesn't have booze. booze I mean I think any guy would freak out too if the <laughs> alcohol wasn't there. Yes, and then it comes finally, and it's kosher wine. <laughs> it's wine, for, and it's not for you. No, nope. I might have gone a little crazy at that point too. I would have drank the wine. <laughs> <laughs> Marissa is always down I mean, to drink the wine. I'm down for wine. <laughs> I mean, maybe we should get some more prosecco up in here. <laughs> yeah, but. we need some more of that. <laughs> Where's Steven when you need him? <laughs> oh. Give us more Prosecco. Yeah. Um, overall, I think this was a really fun episode. That A lot of moments I found myself laughing out loud, and this is really good. Yeah, you were laughing. I was grimacing. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it was I like the good. boxing. That was a fun, fun action scene. T- a different type of action that we normally don't see in the Ricky Blue, rather than like a car chase or something, yeah. you know, actual physical fighting. It was a lot of fun. Oh, and we can't forget to t- talk about Gail and Holly. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. So Gail isn't planning to go to fight night because she's meeting Holly's friends for the first time and they're going to the penny. So they're going to Gail's turf, mm-hmm. um, which Epstein decides to tell her is a good idea since she doesn't give off a very good first impression. <laughs> yeah. It's like that's exactly the kind of motivating talk you want to hear before you get out there. And another situation where Gail's actually talking to other people outside a division, which I don't think we've ever seen. Yeah. Interaction with the other humans. <laughs> other humans. Gail is normal. She's a human. She is a human being, people. Um, well, Holly's friends are kind of witches. Very judgmental. Yeah. I was surprised with that. I was not fans of them. No. And I get it. They're all doctors. They went to med school. They think that they're, you know, smart, which they are. Intellectual. <laughs> And higher class gail didn't really help herself because when they asked for a story the story she told was very typical gail <laughs> yeah like one time my partner got stabbed in the warehouse and almost bled to death in my arms it's like that's that's, that's not the best anecdote no. <laughs> come on gail but i guess when you think about her stories what was she gonna be like one time a guy kidnapped me and held me <laughs> hostage yeah or Oh, I mean... This other time, that, our precinct got shot up. Like, what are you going to say? I mean, say? she really doesn't have the great, fun, fun stories to to relate to people. But also, I think that was Gail's way of, hey, I'm just going to say this one really blunt story just to have you guys stop talking. Yeah, pretty much. You know, like, get off this topic. Pretty much, yeah. And we find out that Holly was actually in the top of her class, and her friends don't understand why she... Is basically slumming it at the police station. Settling in a way. Yeah, settling in a way and working with dead people <laughs> instead of doing something amazing like they both are. Like saving lives yes. instead of, you know, examining lives after they haven't been saved. Yeah. I guess so I think say. that was kind of like a good indicator of, you know, if they already think she's slumming it by her job than her dating a police officer. Her personal life is slumming it, too. Yeah, her personal life is slumming it, too. And they talk to her about it when Gail kind of goes off to the bathroom and walks back up, and she overhears the whole conversation. And Holly even says, like, well, I'm just having fun. Like, you know, they don't. her friends don't think it's going to last, and Gail or Holly doesn't really say anything to defend Gail because – Gail comes from a good family. Yeah. She is educated, and she chose to get into law enforcement. And I think a lot of people think of police officers as people who are like, oh, well, like, whatever. They just probably didn't want to go to college, so, you know, they got into that. And it's like, no. No. Police officers are smart people. They are educated. They are highly trained. And they are. it's a respectable position. Very respectable. Very unsung position, too, yeah. from all types of law enforcement people yeah i was very upset with this conversation i got very 
like angry about it because it's like i know police officers i went to college with people who are now police officers i i went to high school with people who i know are in the law enforcement yeah my my thing that i was more upset was that holly wasn't really defending gail yeah because these are holly's friends and if holly really you know believes in gail and her relationship and you know really trusts that then she should have been be like hey this is someone i now respect and you know want to be in a relationship with and if you don't like it, then, you know, she should have put the kibosh on that. But she didn't. And she didn't fight for Gail. And makes me think, how committed is Holly in this relationship? Because it seems like Holly has had, has been around the block. I mean, she's been a very stable lesbian, I guess you mm-hmm. could say. And this is Gail's first lesbian relationship. So she is kind of new in that aspect. But I feel like Holly should have just defended Gail more if she really did kill for Gail care for gail i think so too and i just loved how this storyline kind of came full circle with you know dove's biggest concerns about gail in the relationship all those things that dove was like hey you know you might not be as committed and you know you have to make sure that she's okay with it you know this is your first relationship and she's been doing this for a while all the things he thought were going to be true about gail ended up being true about holly instead Holly was the one who's, I'm just here having fun, Mm -hmm. which most people would think since it's Gail's first lesbian relationship, that she's the one who's just kind of like, oh, I'm just having fun with it, testing the waters. But Gail was actually committed to this and Holly wasn't. And, you know, it's changing Gail as a person, too, mm -hmm. because Holly is a good person. It's changing her for the better. And she Holly, I mean, sorry, uh, Gail, during that whole conversation with Deb, she's saying, I'm different. I'm a better person. So Holly really is affecting Gail in that yeah. way. And then for Holly not to really reciprocate that feeling just yet, I mean, maybe we'll see a makeup in next week's episode, I hope. But I'm not seeing the mutual respect for each other yet. Yeah. I just didn't like that she said, I'm just having fun. Because no. to me, that makes it sound like it's a, uh, it's, it's not a, a real, it's not a serious it's relationship. Not a commitment. It's not committed. And I think that Gail should stay broken up with her. If that's the way she wants to be. I think Gail was in the right to, you know, walk away at the yeah. end of that. At the end of that, I think Gail did the right thing. I was very proud of Gail. Yep. Go Gail. Go Gail. Go team Gail. <laughs> I mean, we're rooting for Gail. Wow. I know. Who, who would have seen that <laughs> one thunk? coming, right? Um, all right. Is there anything else from this episode that I um, missed? Yeah. No, I think, I think that, that was it. Fun, okay. fun episode. Love the boxing. I kind of want more of that. <laughs> I don't. It can be anyone else besides Nick's face. If Nick was winning that boxing match, I'd be totally okay with it. Yeah, but, but because he, he was losing, I didn't. I wasn't a fan. He has of a good body, boxing. though. I'm surprised. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to say it. I'm like, all right, yeah, get it, Nick. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, moving on. <laughs> moving on. Uh, do we have any news and gossip? Because I know you were reading spoilers. Oh uh, yeah. The okay. News. So. Canada, lucky Canada. They are like a full month ahead of the U.S. Uh, Murky Blue airing on ABC. So anytime I look up for news and stuff, I'm not sure if it's a spoiler for us or, you know, it's already aired in Canada. So it might have been like a Canadian type of article, but I don't know. But I did find a fun video of uh, Ben, Ben Bass, Mm -hmm. uh, who plays Sam. And he, he can play the guitar and sing. Oh. Yeah, and he was on the Hallmark Family, uh, Home and Family video channel and, you know, a nice interview promoting uh, Rookie Blue. And he was singing Elvis, playing the guitar, and I'm like, ah, oh, he's oh. quite the musician. I was Sam very surprised. Swarick, just full of tricks, aren't you? I was very surprised. Go check it out. It's, on, it's available on YouTube and all that. But he's a musician. It's okay. like, what if... He sings to Andy, just serenades him. Are you getting into her. your predictions maybe, now? Maybe, <laughs> maybe. But that's all I have. And now, your After Buzz TV predictions. Well, now that we know that Sam can sing, I would love to see him use that talent on Bo- Rookie Blue. Same here. I mean, like, that'd be the softer side of Sam. Yeah, like maybe he's still dealing with you know the emotional turmoil that was his injury and he goes to an open mic night and you know he's written this 
gut-wrenching, like, heartfelt. heartfelt song. And he's just totally letting his guard down and being the sensitive guy with the guitar. <laughs> no? <laughs> as, as dreamy as that would be, I think that would be way off character for Sam. <laughs> I know, but, you know, everything's changed now. He's back at the precinct, and he feels like, you know, everything's different. So he's going to need to express himself. And what better way than with your guitar and a microphone? Oh, yeah. Well, I think we saw in the preview that maybe Dove and Chloe are having some issues that maybe Dove's not around, which also makes me think, I always forget this, um, the web series, the web episodes that's going on. Episode three was uh, Diaz and Dove. No, I'm sorry. It, it, uh, it was, oh, Duncan, maybe I saw a different episode. Right. Um, you know, the one that I saw was actually uh, Sam and Dove talking, and Dove was asking Sam, like, how did you become an investigator? You know, how did you get into the leadership roles that you've been in? And he's like, what do I need to do to get to the position that you're at right now? And Sam was like, hey, I'm more experienced. I, I'm more street smart. And I, you know, I fight in a different way. And I'm a cop in a different way. You're more analytical, more book smart. And that makes you a great cop, too. And, you know, just like the different ways of being mm -hmm. cops but still being respectable positions. Because Dove apparently maybe wants to make a change in his life which might cause the disconnect between his character and Chloe for next week. Mm. Okay. I see what you're putting out. Putting down there, Marissa. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that Dove has always had the higher aspirations, like even from being a rookie, he's always trying to find his next level up. Mm -hmm. um, so I do think that that could play a factor in his relationship with Chloe. Um, it seems in the previews that Sam and Andy are friends again or you know trying to be friends friends we all know what that means they're boning in the closet yeah i was like they're definitely gonna hook up yeah um which that's inevitable yeah which my heart still isn't completely happy about because we want nick because we want nick um i also hope that next week we get a little bit more of what's going on with tracy and um leo Mm -hmm. you know with the custody and dexter and dexter maybe we'll find out more about this dexter slade yeah Via Steve Peck. Yeah. Steve Peck. Steve's going to have where some. Where were you tonight? Yeah. Steve's um, going to have some dish on Dexter. This is yeah. going to be interesting. So, we're going to find out more about him. That's what I want to know about because I just want to know what's in Dex past and. <laughs> yeah, some skeletons in yeah, his closet. Skeletons in his, But I wonder, ooh, maybe while Steve is digging into Dexter's past, he's actually going to stumble into something like involving Tracy and we'll get a little taste into her past which uh, might not be as squeaky clean as we think it is yeah for her to hook up with someone like dexter maybe she had a dark past that made her turn in onto the right path to become a cop yeah oh that should be Ooh. fun <laughs> guess we're just gonna have to wait until next week to find out we shall see uh make sure you guys keep the conversation going and tweet us all your um predictions and make sure you go on itunes and youtube and like and subscribe to us on there. Marissa, where can they find you? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at Serafini TV. And I am at the Tiana Hobson. And make sure you check out AfterBuzz TV all over the interwebs at AfterBuzz TV. And thank you, Phil, for engineering for us tonight. And guys, we will see you next week. From executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.